The Forgotten City is a game about reliving the same day over and over again. Uh, salve, friend. Using lessons learned from your own mistakes in order to construct the perfect outcome and, in the process, break the cycle. It's about getting the chance to do something all over again until you get it right, which just so happens isn't that far off of an allegory from the game's actual development. This is the story of how changing the setting broke the Forgotten City. That felt good. Oh, it's still standing. The Forgotten City is a murder mystery stuck in a time loop set in an intricately designed Roman city constructed with detailed architecture, art, wardrobe, mythology, all populated with a wide cast of meticulously detailed characters to match the era. It's so well realized that if you didn't know, you might assume that the game was always built from the ground up to be that way. However, some of you may actually know that it wasn't. In fact, far from it. The Forgotten City actually started as a Skyrim mod set in an underground Dwarven city. When designer writer Nick Pierce wanted to release it as a standalone game, it would have to get as far as possible from its original Skyrim setting for obvious legal reasons. So he made one simple decision. Change the set. The idea was just to sort of neatly transplant the story from the fantasy dwarven setting to the ancient Rome setting, making as few changes as possible. This one change to the setting resulted in a series of cascading changes, um, you know, changes requiring changes requiring changes um, that weren't easy to foresee in the beginning, uh, which resulted in me working about 80 hours a week for, for the next four and a half years. At first, Nick had intended the whole thing to just take a couple of years, but as the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day, or in two years in this case. The Forgotten City mod was released back in 2015 and was incredibly successful. It resulted in millions of downloads and even garnered several writing awards including Best Interactive Media from the Australian Writers Guild. Nick Pierce enjoyed making the mod so much that he left his established career as a lawyer to pursue game development full time and bring the mod to life as a full-fledged standalone game. On paper, this ambition appeared achievable. It was meant to be fundamentally a, a reskin. And I'd seen Shakespearean plays where they'd taken the exact same script and just transplanted it from, you know, hundreds of years ago to, to present day. And it seemed to work fine for them. To be or not to be, that is the question. This new version would still be a murder mystery and it would still be a time loop. It just needed a change of scenery. Just take it from the underground Dwarven city above ground into a Roman setting. Easy. Yeah. I fit in, right? You're not from around here, are you? If Nick was going to change the setting, he wanted to do it right. It needed to be historically authentic, so it didn't just feel like he was plopping characters into an environment where they were out of place. So he consulted historians, and over the course of hundreds of video calls and many emails, they laboriously went over temples, mosaics, columns, and even agriculture to ensure it was authentic to the new time period and setting. And the further they got along, the more and more things began to pile up, some of which were not as glaringly obvious as others, like big things, like uh, the game's light source and the physical space where the city is located, for example. The chasm is an easy one to get your head around. A key part of the story is that the city's inhabitants are trapped there, so it had to be redesigned so characters couldn't just simply climb out of the top or walk off into the distance to their freedom. But then there was the game's light source. In the mod, the city had been illuminated by one single sort of science fiction globe uh, at the top of this cavern. Um, but because we can't use science fiction globes anymore, all of a sudden we had to come up with like a sort of a, a, another way of lighting the city, which had to be sort of natural light. And it couldn't be directly above the city because A, that looks super ugly as it turns out. And B, if the chasm had sort of been just this open chasm, people could have just climbed out. But in making the light source natural, suddenly Nick and his team had to change where the fire was placed and the villas. And that also means the temples. All of this done to maintain a sense of realism and authenticity. So the city was redesigned again. Once it was in place, it then became clear that something else wasn't entirely fitting in as well as he had intended. The characters. <sighs> it started with simple name changes like finding the Roman equivalent. 
but then their costumes had to change, so pants and shirts became tunics and sandals. But what about the races? You can't have lizard people in ancient Rome. So this sort of these lizard people living in an underground watery cave uh, had to become like an ancient Greek philosopher and, a, and, a, and a, an African fisherman. And then I realized that like all these characters backstories and, and the reasons for how they ended up in, in the Forgotten City no longer really made sense in the context of their new sort of appearances and so on. And so yeah, I, I had to essentially change almost every backstory. This also meant doing research into what Rome was like during the first century and then using that as the foundation to influence the stories the characters will tell. In the end, uh, the script ended up being like twice as long as was in the beginning and we had to re-record everything and that meant we also had to recast everything because you can't have Americans as ancient Romans, it just doesn't work. So in the end, like everything about the characters uh, changed and, and I'd, I'd hope it'd just been, it would just be the names that changed. It is done. He was wrong because changing the characters meant changing the story and changing the story meant changing one of the game's most defining factors, the time loop. In the original mod, the loop was justified as something purely magical, but magic doesn't have any bearing in historically authentic Rome or its mythology. So after more laborious research, Nick settled on the Roman goddess of renewal and rebirth, which allowed the time loop to exist in the Forgotten City with authenticity and context. But what about the curse? In the original mod, if anyone in the city committed a sin, everyone would burn to death. It was known as the Dwarven Law. This was reworked to become the golden rule. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Of course, this dogma then needed to be manifested in game, which in turn led to entirely new mechanics and plot lines not seen in the original mod. With the butterfly effect that comes from making changes, the two year endeavor to adapt the game became a sprawling, ever growing line of dominoes toppling into each other, creating a cascading list of challenges to overcome with each passing day. And with each passing day, Nick was further and further from any sort of backup plan for his life, like returning to his law practice if the game wasn't a success. If I'd been able to get the project done in two years, I might have had the option to go back. But yeah, as it turns out, like four and a half years is, is just way too long. Every time I sort of had to delay the project or I realized it would take longer, you know, I, I felt that slipping away uh, as an option. And so, yeah, it was it was definitely anxiety inducing. And, uh, you know, I think I, I don't think I slept properly for the entire four and a half years that I was making. It was just it was like I just had a lot of really rough nights of sleep. By the end of it, the ripple effect of changes meant that the only course of action was to build something all over again from scratch. It's dismantling a house piece by piece, only to realize none of the pieces fit together anymore. It was an act of systematically undoing years of work. What, what seemed like a really superficial change to, to the setting ended up just radically changing everything about the, the city and the characters. Um, and the story and the music until all that was really left of the original mod was the premise and the name. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's so wildly different now. Forgotten City is a game about making mistakes, but being able to relive the same day over and over again with the chance to make things right. And for Nick, building his game from scratch is much like the premise he had built the game around in the first place. I got to sort of, you know, rewrite the script, which is now, you know, twice as long and add all these new story beats and twists and endings. And we've got all these new characters and gameplay mechanics and a new orchestral score and, you know, wonderful new cast. Yeah, so it, it, ended, up, it ended up being just a, a much better game um, than it would have been had, had I just sort of smashed it out in two years. But it just took a really, really, really long time to get there. Thankfully, Nick's career risks and long weeks of work were not for nothing. The Forgotten City officially released as a standalone game in 2021 and was garnered with awards all over again, including an excellence in narrative from the Australian Game Developer Awards. Talk about repeating history, but at least some things have changed for Nick. I have to ask, are you sleeping better? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like night and day. <laughs>